Hey, what's up everyone? In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make a 3D first person shooter in Unity. Let's get started. So, let's open up Unity Hub. And the first thing we need to do is make a new project. We're going to be making a 3D project and let's call it um, 3D Shooter. And you can choose where to save it to. Let's press Create. And this is going to take a while, so let's do a time lapse. Ooh. All right, we're in Unity and it's looking really blank. You can move around by right clicking and using the WASD keys and using Q to go down and E to go up while holding down right click. So yeah, it's pretty barren. I think we need to add a level. Let's right click in a hierarchy, go to 3D object and let's click on plane. Now let's reset the position. Let's click on these three dots right here and press reset. Now our plane is in the middle. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's press R. And let's drag this middle square to make it huge. And it's also pure white and that makes it really hard to see. We need to make a new color for our ground. Let's right click on the project and let's go to create material. Let's call it ground. To change the color, let's click on this color picker right here. And let's choose any color. How about a dark blue? Let's turn up the shininess. To apply this to the ground, let's just drag the material onto the ground. Pretty nice. I think we can add some obstacles. So let's click on the plane first. Let's rename it to ground, since that is what it is. Let's right click on the ground. Let's go to 3D object and let's create a cube. Now this cube does not have our ground material. So let's drag our ground material onto it. There we go. We can click R again and let's use the scale tools. So make this a little spawn platform. Now to duplicate, we can press Ctrl D and we can press W to use the move tool and move this around. I'm going to put this over here. Let's go to the scale tool and make it a little bit thinner, a little bit taller also. So there goes a wall. Let's duplicate this again. To rotate, let's press E. Now let's rotate this ground around. And I'm always changing view so I can see where I'm placing these grounds and how I want it to look. I think it looks pretty good. I'm just adding these around the level because the level seems a little bit flat and it might be hard for the player to tell where they are at the moment. So let's just populate the level with some random blocks. I think that's good. Now that we have our ground, we need to add our player. Let's right click, go to 3D object, and let's click on capsule. This is the closest thing that looks to a player. Let's reset the position, and let's move our player up so he's on top of the ground like that. I think we can rename our capsule to player, and we need a material for it also. So let's right click, go to create, material let's call it player uh, i'm gonna make the color maybe an orange color let's drag it onto the player now since this is going to be a shooter game we need to add a gun first thing we need to do is set up our camera so it's looking from the player's point of view let's click on main camera right here and if we go to game we could see what the camera is looking at First, we need to parent the camera to the player so that if the player moves around, so does the camera. Let's drag the camera into the player. Now let's set the position on the Y to 0.5 and the position on the Z to minus 0.2. If we go back to the scene, we should see that the camera is inside of the player or where the player's head should be. So if our player is facing this way, the gun is probably going to be right here. Let's right click on the main camera. Let's go to 3D object and let's create a cube. Now this created a huge cube right inside. I'm going to rename this to handle. It's going to be the handle of our gun. Now we're going to be using the scale tools and the move tools to create the handle of our gun. So let's just scale it down. And let's go back to the move tool and we're going to be moving it so it's on the right side of the player. So the player is going to be holding the gun on his right. And if we switch back to the game view, we should see this cube down here is part of our gun. 
try to make the handle. I'm gonna make the gun a little bit thinner. There we go. There goes our handle. Let's duplicate this and make sure that all of the other parts are inside of the handle. So what we're gonna do is drag and put this inside of handle. So handle one is inside of handle. And that makes sure that if handle moves around, so does the other stuff inside of it. Now let's make the barrel of our gun. So you'll see that jutting out right there is the barrel of the gun. Let's make the other handle. Okay, I think that's pretty good. All right, that's our gun. I'm going to click on the handle and to make sure it's moved out a little bit so we can see more from the player's view. There we go. And I think I want to add a uh, color to the gun also. So let's right click, go to create material. Let's call it gun. How about we do a darkish red color? Let's drag this onto the gun and we have to drag it onto the individual separate pieces since that's what it's made out of. I'm going to turn up the shininess. Okay. And while I'm at it, I also think I want to add some eyes to the player. So I'm going to right click on the player, go to 3D object. Let's click on sphere this time. And we can't see the sphere since it's inside of the player exactly. Let's scale it down and move them out. Boom, our player now has eyes. It looks kind of funny. Okay, now that our player has eyes, you'll see in our game view that the eyes are in front of the player or in front of the camera and they're blocking our view. Let's click on main camera and we're going to be turning up our clipping planes. Let's say to points six maybe so our eyes disappeared now we need to move our gun a little bit more forward and i also think i want to move the eyes backwards a little bit okay there we go now i can turn back our clipping plane 0.5 all right now we're going to be adding movement to our player let's click on our player and you'll see these components on here. There's a transform, a capsule mesh filter, and a mesh renderer. And we also have a capsule collider. So I minimized all of these. We're gonna be adding a component called character controller. So we just search for character controller and add it in. So our character controller is gonna take care of all the movement. Let's add another component called player movements. Let's press new script. And let's press create and add. Oops, I think I don't need any spaces. So how about we just call it movements. Okay, now that our script is down here and it's done loading, let's double click on it to open it up. So we're inside of our code and you'll see these two blocks of code right here. There's void start and void update. Basically void update runs every frame and void start runs at the beginning of the game. Let's delete these comments up here since I just explained that. So the first thing we need to do is make some variables to control things such as the movement speed, how much gravity we have, and the jump height. So let's type those in now. Let's type public floats movement speed. That's going to control the movement. Let's type movement speed equals 5. So that's going to be basically the default value of movement speed. Let's type in public float ball speed and let's make that 25. So that's going to be the gravity scale basically. Now we need a jump height. So public float jump height. Let's set that to 10. Now we need a variable to control the gravity. Let's type in private float gravity. Now we need a couple more. One for the camera to keep track of the camera and one for the controller component that we just added. Let's type in public transform camera and public character controller controller. In FPS games, when you're controlling the character, you never see the mouse on the screen. So we need to do that in our game also. Let's type in cursor.lockState equals cursor lock mode dot locked. 
So that stops the mouse from moving around and messing around with our grain. Inside of the update, we're going to do all of the movement code. The first thing we need to do is let the player look around so he can explore. We need a variable to control the horizontal and vertical movement of the mouse. Let's type in float mouse horizontal equals. Now, how do we get the movement? We type in input dot get axis mouse x. So that's the mouse x. Now the vertical movement of the mouse floats mouse vertical equals. And we're going to be getting the opposite of this. So let's type in minus inputs dot get axis mouse y. Now we don't want our player to look all the way around. Let's type in math f dot clamp mouse vertical minus 90 and then 90. Now we need to apply this movement to the camera and the player. We want the camera to look up and we want the player to look right and left. Since we want the camera to look up and down, let's type in camera.rotate.camera with the lowercase c that rotates vector 3.right times mouse vertical. So that'll make the camera only look up and down then the player is going to be the one that looks left and right. So let's type transform.rotate vector three.up times mouse horizontal. All right, now that we can look, let's try this out. Let's go back to Unity. Let's press the play button. You'll see that we have an error down here. Let's go to our player. The error is because we haven't assigned these variables right here. For our camera, Let's drag in our main camera. For our character controller, let's drag in character controller. Let's go into our game view and we can clear these errors. Okay, let's press play. And you'll see the first thing that happens is our mouse disappears. Second thing is that we can move around. Look at that. I'm looking around, I can look up, down, left look all the way around and you'll see our shadow right here in our shadow you'll see our gun is moving with our camera and that makes it i think look a lot more realistic to show our mouse again let's press escape and then let's stop the project now we need to add player movements let's go back into visual studio all right so we need a variable to keep track of if we're pressing the right arrow left arrow or up and down let's call this horizontal and we're going to make this equal to input dot get access from horizontal. Now, what about up and down? Let's call this a vertical. And we're going to set this to get access vertical. Let's make a variable called a vector three, which is going to store all of our movements. Let's set this to transform dot right times horizontal plus transform dot forward times vertical. Now let's type movement equals movement dot normalized times movement speed. So that's going to control how much speed on our movement we have and we're going to multiply this by time dot delta time. All right, now that we can move horizontally and vertically, we need to have the player have gravity applied to it. So let's type in gravity minus equals fall speed times time dot delta time. So that's basically reducing gravity every second. So if we change our fall speed, gravity should be reduced more. Now we need to detect if we're on the ground and only if we're on the ground, then we can jump. Let's type if controller is grounded, Let's basically reset gravity. Let's set gravity to minus five. So that should make the player stick to the ground. Then let's detect if input dot get button down. Jump. If we're pressing the jump button, which is space, let's set gravity to jump height. Okay, now let's go outside. And the last code we need is to set our movement variable or our vertical value of it to our gravity movement.y equals gravity times time dot delta time. Last thing we need to do is apply this movement to our player. So let's type controller dot move movements. All right, that's all the code. 
make sure you have no errors before moving to unity all right so moment of truth let's press maximize on play then let's press the play button all right let's press right arrow i can move right left arrow i can move left and we can fix the light, the lighting in a different episode but for now we have 3d movement i can jump i can move around there goes our movements. All right, that's it for episode one of our first person shooter in Unity. Thanks for watching and make sure to post ideas for what we want to do in episode two or three and four moving forward. All right, everyone, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.